One of the things that I do quite regularly when I talk about Eminence in the Shadow is I always draw comparisons to Overlord. And I've mentioned why in some of my videos is because of the fact that Overlord is drawing to an end. And I want to be very clear here, I'm talking about Overlord, not Eminence in the Shadow. That Overlord has two more volumes to come out and then it is finished. And so as I mentioned in one of my other videos is that there's kind of a bit of a hole left in me and I'm looking for something to replace that. Something that is as outlandish and as crazy and that's why I made a video previously talking about the hole that Eminence in the Shadow is filling. And again, I like to draw parallels of similarities between Overlord and the Eminence. And whenever I do that, I always get some interesting comments of people being like, oh, but there's differences here. And just because there are differences doesn't mean that there can't be similarities at the same time. You can have both. And I think one of the things that Overlord and Eminence in the Shadow does well enough is that they feel similar enough, but also unique enough that, hey, if you want something like Overlord, then give Eminence in the Shadow a try, but it's different enough that you won't get a carbon copy experience, which is what a lot of isekais have a tendency to do. There are a fair few out there that are very similar to each other. That sort of stud muffin gets reincarnated, picks up five girls, each girl represents a different trope, and they're pretty much bare basic, and it's generally just showing some fan service, and there's not much personality beyond the trope itself. But when you look at Eminence in the Shadow, and this is something that's very prevalent in the anime, and I love the way the anime really emphasizes on it, and yes, it shows some really fun fan service as well, and that's the thing, it's very self-aware, it shows specific angles to draw in attention, but each of the girls, yes, can represent a different type of trope, but it expands beyond that trope as well and adds a lot of flavor and chemistry, and not just in themselves, but also with the other girls, and then also Sid as well. And that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love Eminence in the Shadow, similar to what Overlord does with some of the Floor Guardians. They have their own tropes, they expand on it based on what their creator did, and then also the interactions between them are quite flavorful as well because of how the creators acted towards each other. You look at like Sebus and also Demiurge, their interactions are based on their creators. So as much as they've got their own different types, sort of tropes that they follow, they also have their other layers to it is based on what the creators also have. So it's one of the reasons why I love these interesting similarities but also differences in what the world tries to do. Now of course when you talk about Irons and him being a evil character a lot of people debate whether he is truly good or evil. The thing that I do like about Overlord is that balance between good and evil. I feel like Irons is kind of seen as more logical than anything. He's always tried to be fair and balanced with many people when it comes to setting up rules and structures but then there's also that situation where he can flip the switch and become really evil. But I've always kind of seen that it always made sense for him to be very fair and balanced, which can come off cold and calculated. Eminence in the Shadow Sid, it's all just a game. Like, the world is his oyster. He just is outlandish and crazy and is just having fun. But one similarity that I do see that I don't think will ever change is the relationships between the characters. Now, of course, Riv Overlord, there isn't as many female characters throwing themselves at irons. There are some but nowhere near as many, particularly the two most prevalent ones is of course Albedo and Shaltier. Those are the two main ones that are always fighting for his affection and attention. Eminence in the Shadow has a large cast of girls that are all trying to get his attention, all trying, and it's a big harem. But I don't think there's ever going to be any romance in the story, at least anytime soon. I don't think Sid or Shadow is ever going to pursue anyone in a meaningful capacity because at the end of the day it's all just a role play to him and he probably thinks that these girls don't really have any affection towards him, they're all just playing a game. So for me, I don't ever see it as like a proper romance because I don't think, again, Sid is ever going to pursue any of these girls. I think at the end of the story, if, there, if and when there is an end to Eminence in the Shadow, he is just going to continue his outlandish fun games and it will kind of be sort of a a simple ending but there will still always be that kind of like he's always having fun in his own world where he's playing. I don't think it's ever going to come crashing down where he realizes it all isn't a game and that there's a bigger thing going on. I think the whole point is that it's just going to keep going to where the major story ends. The big bad guys are all defeated and he's, you know, the superhero that's sitting on the throne but he'll still see it as all as a game where all these girls are still trying to chase him. But 
he never really picks a girl because he's not interested in them. The same thing is with Overlord. Overlord, with Irons, he doesn't ever have any intention on picking any of the girls because, well, particularly Albedo Shaltier, because even though, yes, he did set Albedo's settings to fall madly in love with him, it was a joke. He didn't think what was going to happen happened. And even then, he's wanted to change it. But he sees those as his children, that they're his, basically his friend's creations. So he doesn't want to t actually pursue anything because it feels awkward to him. He knows that, yeah, they're real, but they're kind of not real at the same time. And they're kind of all his friend's creations. So it's like, you know, imagine if you had a best friend and they had like a younger sister or a daughter or something. It just feels really, really weird. So I get that. But with Eminence in the Shadow, you could understand maybe, you know, Sid might pick one of the girls. And I think the one that a lot of fans think that he would pick is Alpha because Alpha and him have a particular relationship where he's a little bit more just kind of lazy, kind of almost throws away the whole persona kind of thing. And she kind of almost does what she wants with him. But then when one of the other girls kind of enters the room, he kind of almost goes back into his proper sort of role-playing mode. I mean, if he was to pick any of the girls, I think Alpha would probably be the one, even though when it comes to picking my favorite, it is very, very, very hard. And that is one thing that Eminence in the Shadow does right. It makes it really hard for you to have a favorite. I mean, even though I kind of feel like Beta's my favorite, all the other girls are just so much fun. Even the ones that I thought I'd never really like as much, I still have a, a fair bit of enjoyment with them, a bit of an attachment to them, particularly a certain wolf type girl who has got this obsession about breeding a hundred children and having all these wives it's just so much fun and you can't help but love every one of the characters because their quirks are just so cute and adorable river overlord though my constructive criticism with that is that i'm not a big fan of all the characters in overlord and i sometimes do feel like there are too many characters that I just don't care about and I feel like it's because the author introduces a bunch of characters and then just never really touches on them except like that one like note in like a, a chapter where it's like oh yeah that character's doing this and it's like one line and then you never hear about them for like six more volumes. That's my only criticism when it comes to all the characters. There is just too much scope when it comes to the characters but then you could say the same with Emerson and Shadow. There's a lot of characters in there. But for some reason, the author has a tendency to keep them all relevant as well. And I think it's because they all do activities together because they're all part of this shadow garden organization. They're all kind of all being set different tasks and assignments. And so they're all kind of doing their own thing. But at the same time, I don't think there is as many characters in Eminence in the Shadow as there is Overlord. Like, there's a lot of characters in Overlord. And I've talked about it before called Scope Creep when it comes to storytelling. I feel like there's just way too many characters. But again, while I'm talking about the differences between Overlord and the Eminence, I love them both. And it's just nice to have something to fill in that gap. So this is kind of was a continuation from my pr previous video about filling in the gap because I had some interesting comments where people were talking about, hey, there are these differences and pointing out where these additional differences are. And then also some people pointing out the similarities as well. And as I said, is that yes, there can be differences and there can also be similarities. Both can happen in a story like these. It's just one of the things that I love about animes like this and one of the reasons why I've gotten so much into Eminence in the Shadow and plan to continue reading the light novels and watching the anime. As I mentioned before, it's a whole different experience with the anime. But I also did learn that the web novel and the light novels do have differences, but they're deliberately different so that the author gives a different experience. It's not like they've done the differences because they're not happy with the web novel, but apparently they've done that because they want to give something different for those that read the light novels and those that read the web novels. So like, if you want to read both, you've got a different experience. And I think that's a very interesting approach that the author's going down is like, hey, I'm giving you two of the same similar stories, but there are also differences with it. It's an approach I've never really seen done before. And honestly, it fascinates me because honestly, if the author wanted to, he could just create an identically the same story. But for some reason, he's tried to create two unique stories, but still have some similarities, but also deviate as well. So 
Curious to see what the differences are because apparently the differences do deviate quite much more as the volumes go on. It's basically volume four and onwards is where the big deviations start to happen. Volumes one through three are apparently very similar. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Eminence in the Shadow? Are you enjoying it? Who is your favorite waifu? All waifus if you want to rank them or group them however you want to and again i will be continuing to talk about not just the anime but also the light novels as well and also i will be trying to get into some of the game stuff as well because i've been told that the game adds extra side story stuff as well that's interesting to delve into so i'll be trying to consume some of that as well and talking about it so again if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video